women in Knight's Nieces were all women that she had spent time with um, and it helped with mentoring their career. Is that correct? Yes. Um, yeah, they, they are, that I have been, um, you know, friendly with her through correspondence or knew her in person. Uh, some of them were very good friends with her. Um, so yes, yes, yeah, she, she was, she was a wonderful person, really kind. Um, I want to, oh, go ahead. She, I was only going to say, she didn't, she didn't have that kind of, um, writer's ego that made her competitive. Because I think she was so sure and confident of her own writing and her own creativity. She did what she did. She, you know, and she wasn't threatened by anybody else. Um, so she just wanted to help other writers. She, there was no competitiveness in her. Um, she was just really kind and encouraging. It's amazing, isn't it? It's wonderful what women can do when they work together too. <laughs> um, the story that you wrote, I'm, I'm very curious about Knight's Nieces, seeing as Storyteller is a tribute anthology. And we'll the writers who will be submitting stories, I'm sure that they would love to hear some advice or how you approached the idea of working in Tannis' realm or working with Tannis' material and how you decided to come up with the story that you included in that particular anthology, Knight's Nieces, which was published by Storm Constantine at yes, that's Amanda, right. at Amanda yeah. Press. Yeah. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, that yeah. story. Um, well, I, uh, we all, uh, I think there's eight, eight, eight writers in the anthology and everybody wrote something entirely different. Some people, there were poems, some people did um, a short story based in one of Tanith's world, worlds. And um, I can't exactly remember how I came up with the idea for mine, but uh, it, the story ended up, um, it was a story about two girls who were basically in, in broken homes, having an absolutely hellish time of it, and how they bonded. They found a copy of the Storm Lord and fought over it, so they ended up with like half each. But then they bonded over it, and um, the story in the Storm Lord um, brought the two of them together, and gave them sort of gave them the strength to get out of the awful situations they were in. Um, I can't now remember where that idea came from, um, but there was there was something I wanted to say about my discovery of the Storm Lord, and you know when I, when I started, because I had been reading. Tolkien and other sorts of fantasy that were generally had an evil warlord or some horrendous sorcer sorcerer <laughs> um, doing things in the background. The thing about the Storm Lord was it had no evil sorcerer. It didn't have any magic rings or anything like that. The plot was entirely motivated by human behaviour, um, by accidents of birth, um, Arguments, jealousies, conflicts, selfishness, everything that motivated the plot in the Storm Lord was completely human. And that was some, one of the magical things about Tanith is that she could she could create the absolutely most fantastical world. And yet everything that happened in it was so grounded in, in people being humans and um, accidents of birth and all sorts of sex, of course. <laughs> I've never come across so much sex in fantasy before. <laughs> but yeah, so she had that really grounded um, sense of reality. And in, in some ways, her writing could be quite brutal. Um, I remember that there was a lot of, she portrayed a society in which there was a lot of brutal sexism which I guess was pretty normal for the 70s, 80s. Um, I found it very uncomfortable reading because, you know, men would be very sexually aggressive. Um, the females would tend to cope with it by being very passive. And I, I sometimes want to shake them. Um, and yet, I, her, I think a lot of her work is work that you need to read twice because I... I wasn't all, I'd get mad with the characters and thinking and think, 
well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why doesn't this or that or the other happen? But the thing is, when you go back to it and read it again, um, you have, I found when I completely put my trust, instead of it putting my own expectations onto the characters, putting that aside and trusting what Tanif was telling me, then I got the characters more. And you could, you, there was a very subversive, not just in the Storm Lord, but in probably almost everything she's written, um, a subversive sub feminist subtext. Um, and in almost all cases, the the horrors that have been visited on some of the female characters. Oh gosh, do the, the do, do the men ever get their comeuppance? <laughs> yeah, I, I read White as Snow. That was in the nineties, I believe. Yeah, it was in the nineties or aughts. Um, and and it was it, it kind of shook me because because I'm such a fairy tale person to see the way that she had rendered that story was completely different than anything I could have possibly conceived you know um it was yeah that was something very interesting about her work um and, and you spent time with her so she was a, a a big observer of human behavior I'm I'm guessing then I believe so yes